Hi everyone, welcome to Soulmates Cooking, where Chris, my wife, and I, we cook all homemade original recipes. We're really excited tonight to share our bolognese recipe from our cookbook. This is our cookbook, Soulmates Cooking. We'll put a link down in the description so you can order this on Amazon if you like. There's 150 recipes in this book, lots of great pictures. Here's the picture of the bolognese. This is what we're going to make together tonight. You ready? Let's do it. We're making veal and pork with our bolognese. You can use beef, beef and pork, beef, veal and pork, just veal. You can use whatever meat you want. Be creative. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna break these up into bite-sized pieces. We've even used sausage links for this before, taking the casing off and then break the meat up. Okay, once I get this all broken up the way that I want it, I'm gonna generously season the meat with some kosher salt and black pepper. Then we're gonna brown it in our Dutch oven here and get some olive oil. If you see, I have my what's called my mise en place, okay? That means everything in place. So I'm not running around to the fridge or going here, the cupboard. I have everything in front of me that I need. I am gonna have to do some chopping. So once we get our meat cooking, we'll get those chopped up, okay? All right, let's start with our pork. You hear a nice sizzle, that's what you wanna hear. Drop our veal in. This is gonna take about 10 minutes, okay? We wanna Brown the meat a little bit. Some juice is gonna be created there. It's gonna pull up. We wanna reduce all that down, all right? So that's almost completely gone. That'll give us a lot of flavor on the bottom of the pot to cook our vegetables. So we'll see you back in a few minutes. Okay, we're back. The meat is starting to cook. The juice is starting to reduce there. So we're gonna leave that alone. Let's get our vegetables prepped. I do go ahead and peel some carrots. Now, you see in a separate bowl, I have the carrot peels. Any scraps from your celery. Try to save all that stuff. Save it for a couple days, make vegetable stock, put it with a whole chicken, make chicken stock. See, like my end of my carrots, I'm gonna save that. Now when we cut up vegetables for bolognese, they don't have to be perfect, okay? But you want them to be somewhat uniform. So you see, I'm not worried too much about how these look. Let's give the meat a stir. You can see, the juice is really starting to reduce down. This is looking great. Celery, cut these ends off. I'm gonna save those as well. Just try to cut these in strips. Again, I'm just trying to make sure they're all somewhat uniform. This is a really easy recipe. You can follow along at home and do this yourself, and you can mix and match different ingredients. It's such a nice dinner. I like to eat it for lunch the next day, too. I'm gonna use half of this onion. Again, I'm gonna save my scraps for stock. I know I make it look easy, but this doesn't have to be perfect. Check on our meat. And we're starting to develop some brownness on the bottom of that pan. That's called fond. That's the flavor. When you put any wine or any other vegetables and, and release that stuff off the bottom of the pan, it makes for some awesome flavor. So while that finishes up, let's, let's get some garlic chopped up. Just get your knife and give it a little smack. That'll take the skin right off. Save that. Okay, once you get the skin off the garlic, give them another hit. Release some of the oil, see? Just hitting it with the back of my knife, and I'm just going to chop it up. A lot of this will cook down too, so don't worry about this looking perfect either. Clean as you go. Now that's what's really important here. I watch a lot of people cook, and they're halfway through cooking the recipe, and they haven't cleaned up the first few things they've done. And then all of a sudden there's stuff everywhere, and their apron's covered, and their hair's all over the place. If you're prepared at first, and you just go step by step, you clean as you go, you'll stay nice and calm. All right, this is perfect. All the juice is pretty much gone. We just have a little bit of oil in the bottom of the pan. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the meat. I'm just gonna put it in a mixing bowl here. I'm gonna go ahead and put my garlic, onions, celery, and carrots in here. All right, now we're just gonna sweat these vegetables probably for five to 10 minutes. Let them cook down, get some nice aromatics going through the room here. I have to say, I love cooking in a Dutch oven. The way they retain heat, I don't know, it's just so comforting. Right? Cooking a Dutch oven, this says comfort to me. Now, I'm gonna get a little salt and pepper in with these vegetables. It's always good to season in layers, right? You put something in the pan, hit it with some salt and pepper. You can add whatever seasoning you like. I'll be honest with you, a lot of dishes you get in fancy restaurants, it's a little bit of salt and pepper that takes that dish from here to here. And people try to replicate it at home and they, they can't get that flavor profile. 
And a lot of times it's just a little more seasoning. I am going to take our San Marzano whole tomatoes and I'm going to crush those. I have crushed tomatoes here, but I also have some whole San Marzano tomatoes. Love these, they're so sweet, packed with flavor. I just like to break them up by hand. I usually ask Chris to break up the San Marzano tomatoes and usually we're covered in tomato juice at the end of it. So you have to be a little careful, they will tend to squirt at you. This is another one of those texture things, different sizes of the meat, right? Just to keep your mouth excited. Same thing with the tomatoes. I have, these are crushed, right? Just canned crushed tomatoes, but these I'm crushing by hand. So we're gonna have little bits of tomatoes and big pieces of tomatoes. So you'll have a different mouthfeel as you go through this bolognese. All right, that was easy. See all the brown bits on the bottom of the pan? That is condensed flavor. If you've ever heard the term deglazing, okay, when all you get all this flavor on the bottom of the pan, and then you put some sort of liquid in, we're gonna put some white wine in. That immediately releases that flavor from the bottom of the pan. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some white wine in and I'm gonna try to scrape some of that flavor off the bottom of the pan. This is looking great. When I smell that reduced wine, if it burns my nose at all, I'll let it cook a little bit longer, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and add in our whole tomatoes that we hand crushed, add our crushed tomatoes. And I'm gonna go ahead and return the meat back to the pot. All right, stir all this together. This is coming together nicely. All the different colors and textures. Let's go ahead and hit it with a little more salt and pepper. This is a really good technique, right? If you don't have one, it's not a big deal. But if you do, once you get to the end of your Parmesan wheels or your blocks, put these in a bag, put them in the refrigerator, and drop them into your sauces. They really add a lot of flavor as these come up to a simmer. So I'm just gonna plunge this down into the bolognese and let that sit in there as this thing comes up to temperature. Our bolognese is almost done. This looks and smells so good. You always wanna taste your food. If it's not good enough for you, how's it gonna be good enough for your guests? So always get a little taste. Make sure you feel good about the flavor. Hmm. That's really, really good. I wanna let those carrots soften a little bit more. So I'm gonna let this simmer for another 10 minutes or so. And then I think we'll be all set. In the meantime, boiling off some penne pasta. Another five, 10 minutes of simmering and then I'm gonna go ahead and add our fresh basil. I took out that Parmesan cheese rind. I now have some fresh basil. Basil's so delicate. I like to just break it up by hand. So I'm gonna break this up, put it right into our bolognese. And that's gonna add so much more flavor to this bolognese. Okay, our pasta's done. Let me get that strained. Pasta cooked, you can see I have our pasta water reserved here. God, I wish you could smell this. But look, not everybody has to cook for six people every night. If you were, I would take the pound of pasta, fold it in here, put some pasta water in, bring it together, cheese, fold that in, throw it on the table. But I'm gonna create a portion for two people here, just in case you wanna make a bigger pot. If it's just two of you or three of you, you make this, you cook it for dinner for three, wrap this up, Tupperware, good for five days or so. In a few days, you have it again, all right? So I'm gonna put some bolognese in our pan. And I'm gonna take a little bit of our pasta. Now, you can see this is all coming together with the pasta and the bolognese. Now, here's my pasta water. Now, you cooked pasta in here, so what happens to pasta water after you cook the pasta? It gets really starchy, and when the salt, it's also flavored. So this becomes a really good add to your sauce to stretch things out a little bit, thicken everything, and bring it together. So I'm just gonna put a little bit, not too much. Now this is really important. When you cook your pasta and you're gonna use this method where you wanna thicken things with the pasta water or stretch that sauce out, don't cook the pasta past al dente. Cook it right before al dente. That way when you put it into your pan or into this pot and you start to fold and bring things together, you give the pasta another minute or two to cook with the sauce. Then it's gonna pick up all that flavor. You can see the difference. Now, if you look at this, from when I put the bolognese in and then I put the pasta water in, you can almost see it start to thicken and coat the noodles. Let's hit it with some Parmesan cheese. Put as much in as you want. Get a plate. Ooh, you see that? Cheese is kind of gooey and the noodles are coated. Here you go. Here's, this is probably a portion for two people. So good. Pasta's cooked perfectly. And a fresh grated cheese. This is so good. You guys are going to love this. I hope you go ahead and cook this bolognese. Make it for your family. If you love this recipe, give this video a thumbs up. And if you like what we're doing here at Soulmates Cooking, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell so you get notified every time Chris and I put out a new recipe. Alright? Happy cooking.